Hey! So, West Coast game went to a shootout. <laughs> Not a surprise. So, that, that delays me getting things started by about 20 minutes. So, I apologize for people who have notifications turned on, waking up in the middle of the night, like, what? The? Oh. Downvote. Stupid notification. Isn't Shannon in bed already? It was dumb. All right. <laughs> All that aside, there was some good hockey tonight. We're going to start off with Pittsburgh and Boston. You know, Pittsburgh may have lost three of the first four against Boston. You would not have known it by tonight's game. And what's impressive with tonight's game, too, is uh, not really a need for Crosby. And you wouldn't know Malkin's been out. Uh, so, yeah, Pittsburgh tonight, not too shabby. And they started off very fast. Uh, shots were 3 nothing in their favor three and a half minutes into this. Uh, the Bruins were a step behind for the first seven minutes, and it kind of stayed that way through the first period. Uh, Vladar was passing the test to that stage of the game. Uh, the Bruins get a power play. That's killed off. Uh, better better play by the Bruins after the power play, although they still didn't get very many shots in the first period. Uh, Rust then had a steal and a chance in that final minute, which was saved. So you go to the second period. Uh, there's a break by the Pens. Uh, Vladar makes a save. There were two breakaways to that stage of the game saved by Vladar, so some defensive miscues there by Boston. And then Aston Reese scores from Freddie Goudreau and Chris or Brandon Tanev. See, the Goudreau-Tanev thing throws me off. And uh, and that's at 2:01. So, uh, Pittsburgh coming into today was 12-3-1 when they score first. And at this point, the Bruins still only had two shots in the game. Uh, Bruins then get some pressure. It seemed like maybe they were waking it up. Uh, Marino had a crease pass. That was covered. Uh, then Matheson defended a chance for Bleed. Uh, Bleed's had some good opportunities, and because that's his name, I'd like to see him get some goals so I could say Bleed drew blood, but it just doesn't happen. Um, so Matheson would then score from Angelo and Cece at 13-12. Uh, so that's an interesting trio of players that I guarantee haven't combined on a goal yet this year. Uh, and then there was a last-minute press by the Penguins. Vladar denied CC right at the horn. But it's 2-0 Pittsburgh after two. And it's pretty obvious where this one is going, even though Boston's play was picking up. Uh, third period, first-minute power play, power play for the Penguins. Easy for me to say. Uh, that was killed off. The shots were actually 1-0 for the Bruins at five minutes, so they didn't allow a shot during that power play. Uh, the Bruins were in control, but DeSmith became the story in that third period. Marchand would break the shutout from Bergeron and Sporeal at 11 minutes and 14 seconds. Uh, but they don't get within a goal for very long. Jason Zucker, he scores from Rodriguez and Pedersen at 13.07. Uh, there's a goalie pull with three minutes left, which allows the empty netter. Gensel from Dumoulin at 17.51. Pittsburgh wins this one 4-1. Uh, they go to 24.11 and 2. Boston drops to 18-10 and 5. And I'm telling you... Boston had better be be careful because there's a team behind him that's been heating up. Uh, shots, 7-2 Pittsburgh in the first, 13-10 Boston in the second, then 16-6 Boston in the third. Like I said, DeSmith takes over in the third. Uh, power plays, or the shots were 31-23 for Boston at the end of the night. The power plays, Pittsburgh 0-for-1, Boston 0-for-2. Your three stars, Matheson, DeSmith, and Aston Reese. The hits were 35-29 for Boston. Block shots were also 15-12 for Boston. DeSmith saves 30 out of 31. Vladar saves 19 out of 22. And with each start that Vladar makes, the more comfortable I am with him being one of the two goalies for them next year. Um, I Obviously, you know, when you haven't seen a goalie play at the NHL, there's always that chance he's going to flame out at the NHL level. But I, I, do, I do like Vladar. I don't know what the ceiling is there. But, yeah, uh, he's... He should be fine for them. All right, next up, Rangers. So the Rangers kind of broke some hearts tonight, but I have to say this. The Buffalo Sabres are, are playing a lot better. It didn't really show by the end of this one, but they're playing better. I think a lot of what happened here is the Rangers realize how important every game is now. So Asplin scored from Skinner at two minutes and six seconds, and that kind of wakes everybody up. So the Rangers tried to answer. Uh, Olofsson had a chance after that great start by Buffalo to this game. Absolutely great start. Uh, the Rangers press at the half. That's cleared. Uh, first power play then for the Rangers, but an aggressive penalty kill by the Sabres. Uh, and then they get a late power play themselves. That would be their only power play of the game, though. Second period. First five minutes favor the Rangers by a lot. Skinner then had a really nice break. He didn't have a stick, but he had a really nice break. 
And then uh, the, the, the puck ends up going the other way. Blackwell hits the post, and then Blackwell ends up getting the goal. On a nice feed from Strom, uh, Panarin and the Panarin had the other assist at 6:40. So, the Skinner break, which you're you're going to see that highlight everywhere. Remember, the Rangers scored right after that. So, uh, that just kind of sums up Buffalo's season, doesn't it? We get a break. The guy who has the break doesn't have a stick, and then they score the other way, right? And that's what you're thinking if, as a Sabres fan. Um, the first half of that period was all Rangers, really was. Um, Fox had a chance to tip wide. The Rangers get a power play again. That is killed off. Uh, Buffalo had two shots that whole period. So, third period, Ocpozo had an early chance that was saved. The Rangers press at three and a half minutes. They were guilty of some overpassing tonight. And, yeah, you got to watch that overpassing. Uh, it's something that Philadelphia definitely has a problem with the Rangers, too. It's a it's a confidence thing. Um, very often, if you see a team passing the puck too much, like, why aren't they shooting? It's because guys don't have confidence in their shot. Um, Heedle, though, would score from Gauthier and Truba at 6-17. Uh, the Rangers get a power play after that. Tokarski made some great saves. Uh, shorthanded in that period, he he did. This is a team that was outshot 36 to 10 in the second and third period. Tokarski, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, the Rangers get another power play after that, which led to more saves by Tokarski. They pull the goalie with a minute and 30 seconds left. Darlene seemed to hurt his hand. Uh, blocking an empty net goal from Cry from Kreider, and I thought, wow, that's you know that's a valiant effort by him. Yeah, it's too bad because it's Buffalo; they're going to lose. But at least he didn't allow the empty net goal. It was kind of nice to see Dolly do that. However, off of a faceoff, last ten seconds, uh, Tage Thompson ties it from Middlestad and Reinhardt at 19:56. Look out, Buffalo's forced overtime. So we go to overtime. Early control went to the Rangers. Uh, Hall had a shot that was saved, but it was a pretty conservative overtime to the point where the first shot the Rangers actually got on net went in. So Benajad from Panarin and Fox at 432. So that was with 28 seconds left in the overtime. And so Buffalo loses this one in overtime. The Rangers go to 17, 15, and 4. Uh, for Buffalo, they dropped to 7, 23, and 6. But again, that's now 6 points there. So that's 20 points overall. It's getting better. Their points percentage is getting better. Uh, shots in this one. Buffalo outshoots the Rangers in the first 12 to 10. Second and third period, all Rangers. 15 to 2 in the second, 21 to 8 in the third. Both teams had one shot in the overtime. Final shots 47 to 23 for the Rangers. Power plays. Rangers 0 for 4. Buffalo 0 for 1. Your three stars, Tokarski, Blackwell, and Panarin. So all three stars were uh, were worthy in this one. And Tokarski being number one makes total sense because without Tokarski's goaltending, this, this doesn't get to overtime. The Rangers wipe them out. Um, hits, 17-8 for Buffalo. Blocked shots, 13-7 for Buffalo. Shesterkin, 21 saves on 23 shots. Had a good game. Totally overshadowed because Tokarski saved 44 out of 47. So for Buffalo, the win streak ends at 1. But they haven't lost in regulation in two games. So there's, there's that silver lining. It's there. You can find it. Next up. Oh, um, there's not always a silver lining. So... For, for the Caps, I guess the silver lining out of this is they're still tied for first place, but they play again tomorrow. So tomorrow, they are in against the New Jersey Devils. The good news is they're 6-0 and against the Devils. That's the good news. The problem is they were 3-0 and and against the Islanders. So uh, Carlson scores right away from Wilson and Sher Sherry at 101 as the first shot. And that was right after Samsonov got hurt. So before I can even put on the board, the board that Samsonov's hurt and Vanacek's in, well, Carlson scores. I'm like, all right, well, I'll just put that after that. However, at 5.02, Eberly with the first shot by the Islanders. This is on Vanacek. He scores from Komarov and Barzell. And then Barzell scores at 16.09. And I'm going, hey, I, this looks a lot like the Avalanche game. Um, Samsonov then returned with 3.04 left and they put him in. Which was surprising to the announcers. Kind of surprising to me as well because... You know, he was hurt, and well, we'll see what happens. What happens is, uh, the first shot that he got after he got in the net, I think, I think this was the first shot, it went in too. Uh, Nelson from Bailey and Beauvillier at 1732. If it wasn't the sh first shot, it was close. Uh, and then Sprong scores from Eller 20, 22 seconds after that, so it's 1754. But before they can really say, hey, we're back in this, Everly score or Barzell scores from Everly and Mayfield at 1853. So that's two goals for Barzell and an assist in the first period. And it's 4-2 to two for the Islanders after one. And it looked a lot like last night's Colorado game. Just where the scoring gets bunched up is different. Second period. 
Sezika scores from Clutterbuck at 303. Capitals get a power play. They do score on it. Oshie scores from Ovechkin and Backstrom at 647. And then about a minute and 20 seconds later, the Islanders restore the big lead. Eberle from Barzell and Green at 808. The shots were 6-2 for the Islanders with 9.30 left. The interesting thing is both shots in that period, or no, one of the two shots had gone in for the Capitals. So it was a 500 safe percentage, 50% safe percentage. Um, ne neither goaltender in this game is going to look back and go, that was a great game for me. Um, Carlson scores from Verona and Sprong in 1901. So, um, yeah, it's 6-4. to four after two periods and it's the capitals so you look at this going to the third and you're like well it's not over because it's the capitals they're able to score a bunch of goals they they showed against the rangers they can score a bunch in a short period of time right but in the third period it's the normally goal challenged islanders who add to the lead it's bailey from beauvillier and letty at 313 uh there were there were 44 shots and 11 goals at that stage so one out of every four shots was going in the net yeah um Islanders get a power play. They then get another. They don't score on those. However, Barzell would score with a minute and six seconds left from Bailey and Mayfield. That's three goals and five points for Barzell tonight. And an eight to four win for the Islanders. It's obnoxious because that eighth means I had to fish into my, my case for another magnet. So, because I have seven of each team on the board, which has been fine until the last couple of nights. Um, <clears throat> 23, 10 and 23, 10 and four now is the record for the Islanders. 23-9-4 is the record for the Caps. And this was a very important game for the Islanders. They needed to show that they could beat one of the top teams in the division because that's been one of the storylines, right? They they get their points against the lower teams, but how are they going to do against the higher ones? So they're tied for first coming out of tonight. Uh, shots, 13-7 in the first in favor of the Islanders. 9-7 in the second in favor of the Islanders. 11-8 Islanders in the third final shots. 33-22 in favor of the Islanders. So that's 55 shots and 12 goals. <laughs> Anyways, uh, power plays. Washington went one for one. The Islanders went 0 for two. Uh, three stars, Barzell, Eberly, and Komarov. Hits, 26 to 20 for Washington. Block shots, 15 to 8 for the Islanders. Samsonov saved 18 out of 24. Vanacek saved 7 out of 9. Varlamov saved 18 out of 29. So, uh, yeah, this was this was a, a game for, for scoring. It was a pretty high scoring game. You'll notice I didn't take a lot of notes because... There were a lot of goals going on, so I'm like, I don't, I don't think I need to worry about notes on this one. All right, next up, Blue Jackets. So Columbus tonight played, I thought, a pretty good game, and then Tampa Bay showed why they're the defending Stanley Cup champions in that third period. And so for Columbus, you know, the the whole idea of, well, it's it's a moral victory. I, I don't know that that necessarily works. Uh, Columbus is going to need some help, but. I, I thought they got some help from other teams tonight, too, because some of their competition had kind of rough nights, too. Uh, good start, though, for Columbus. They had a very good start to this. Uh, Sorelli uh, beat out an icing call, but Columbus defended well there. Uh, Vasilevsky stopped a foodie chance. The shots were actually 6-1 to one in favor of Columbus seven minutes into this, so they were they started off very well. Pressed by Columbus at eight and a half minutes. The Bolts then get a power play. Uh, they don't score on that. In fact, Jenner gets a shorthanded chance, but... Then there's a five on three for a minute and two seconds. A five on three, you don't want to give that to Tampa. They score. Braden Point from Stamkos and Hedman at 15.45. So it's one nothing after one period. But honestly, if you're Columbus after that period, you're like, well, we, we allowed a goal five on three, but we had a pretty good period. Let's build on that. And they do. Second period, two minutes in, or there was two minutes of four on four early. Uh, Elvis denied a, a, a Luke Shen opportunity. Uh, there were some end-to-end -end rushes about six minutes in. And then Wierenski scores from Robinson and Domi at 9.04. So Max Domi's starting to put up some points. Uh, he was on the board a couple of times tonight. Uh, Jenner then had a shot that missed high. Columbus gets a power play. Vasilevsky denied Jenner, although Hedman helped on that play. His stick was behind the pad and kind of helped to keep that from going in the net. Uh, there was a late power play for the Bolts. And then Stamkos hits one post and Braden Point hit the other. So it's 1-1 going to the third. Uh, third period, uh, Columbus completed the kill of the penalty that was near the end of the second period. Uh, Savard had a chance. Uh, Vassi makes a blocker save on that. And they even said Savard's playing like he thinks he's an offensive player. Um, <clears throat> Atkinson was stopped, but it was a good start for Columbus in that period. It really was. 
And then Robinson scores from Domi and Wierenski at 10.54. So all three of those players had two points tonight. Uh, Domi then had a shot that was saved. So again, Domi, a couple of helpers. He had a good opportunity. He had, four, I think, five shots total in the game. I know he had four shots after 40 minutes. He's waking up. Um, Colton, however, would score for Maroon at 14.48. And before Columbus really has a chance to say, okay, it's a tie game if we can get this to overtime, um, Point scores the second of the night from Palat and Johnson at 15.54. That went in off Bjorkstrand's stick, and uh, that made it 3-2. to two. Uh, Columbus would pull the goalie late to no avail. Uh, they dropped this one in regulation. They dropped a 14, 16, and 8. Tampa goes to 25, 9, and 2. And so they picked themselves right back up after a loss. Uh, shots in this one, 15, 11 in favor of Tampa in the first. 15 to 7, Columbus in the second. And then 12 each in the third period. Final shots, 30, 38 to 34 in favor of Columbus. Power plays Columbus 0 for 1, Tampa Bay 0 for 3, or 1 for 3. Three stars, Point, Vasilevsky, and Colton. I was surprised that Domi didn't get one of the stars. But hey, um, hits 20, 27 to 23 for Tampa. Block shots, 12 to 11 Tampa. Or even Wierenski could have got a star. But yeah. Um, Mer Merzlikens, 31 saves on 34 shots. Vasilevsky, 36 saves on 38 shots. And shows again, he may very well be the best goaltender in the league. But he plays on one of the best teams in the league. So that may go under the radar a little bit. That being said, I need to change boards. Next up, Detroit, the Wings, Florida. Uh, this was the final meeting between the two, and Florida won five of the first seven. Uh, Detroit played well tonight. Detroit showed that, again, they're, they're pretty good at playing spoiler. And Thomas Grice, who has had a really rough season, had a very good game tonight. So the shots were 3 nothing Panthers at three minutes. The Wings weren't getting any chances, and then they got one. They got a chance, they got a shot, and it was a goal. Adam Ernie with the goal from Stetcher and Nemeth at 421. Panthers then try to answer, and the Wings got stuck on one shot for quite a while. Um, and it felt like this might end up being up to Grice if they were going to have a chance. And then Achari scores from Verhage and Yandel at 11.55. So that ties it up. The Wings would press with four minutes left again. They played well tonight. They actually outshot Florida in the first period. So go to the second in a tie game. Shots were 3-1 to one for the Panthers at five minutes. Really, really strong first half for the Panthers in this game. Um, the Wings then get a power play after Florida gets one. So that's the Wings' first power play. We then get two minutes of four on four after that. Bit of a penalty-filled second period. Uh, Grace then denied Stillman. Panthers go back to the power play. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Larkin got hurt uh, with the, the penalty he, he gave Stillman. However, or he, he took on, on the Stillman hit. He would stay in the game, but keep an eye on that. So third period, Stillman and Smith then had a fight in the first minute. I don't know if it was rooted in the Larkin thing or what it was, but yeah, Smith's like, you want to go? And Stillman's like, sure, or the other way around. Uh, Huberto then took a penalty. He disagreed with that. He did not think it was a penalty. He was very vocal about how he didn't think it was a penalty. Uh, refs then missed two high sticks on the same play, one for each team. They missed them. Just flat out high sticks, they missed them. Uh, Grice then robbed Vitrano. Uh, Frankie had a good game. Uh, and yeah, Mantha would then score from Rasmus and Nemeth at 6.07. So this game got really interesting. 2-1 uh, for Detroit in the third period. And then the, the game's getting kind of scrummy too. Florida clearly taking this personal. Uh, power play for the Panthers. That was a no. Uh, there's a delay of game call. Uh, this is a Panthers power play again. It was Merrill's second in a row. So Merrill gets the first penalty. He comes out when it's done. And then he just took the puck and put it over the glass so right back to the right back to the box for him and on that power play florida makes him pay vitrano scores from verhage and huberto at 10 40 you can't give these guys too many chances on the power play they will make you pay uh verhage then drew drove for the lead uh verhage no no goals for him tonight but very prominent a couple of assists um larkin had a chance that missed wide late and then in the last minute uh, there were chances for the Wings. Got Leafs chances in there. Yeah, the Leafs came out and they played that last-minute chances for the Wings. So we go to overtime. Yeah, the Leafs just came out and started playing. Their that'd, that'd be great. I mean, I know when shipping up to Boston starts playing during a game or I hear Zombie Nation, I'm like, hey, the Bruins are there. Nobody expects that. This is going to be like a Hollywood movie. So yeah, uh, overtime, uh, the Panthers controlled it. Uyghur fired it wide. Uh, but this was, this was Florida's game. Wenberg scores from Forsling and Vitrano at 1 minute and 25 seconds. So Vitrano with an assist to go with his goal. Uh, and yeah, Florida ends up winning it. They go to 24-9-4. and four. 
Detroit goes to 12, 21, and 5, and little did they know they were going to be passing Ottawa by one point. We're going to start looking at where teams are at and the whole draft lottery thing. And yeah, with that one point, they're now one point ahead of Detroit or ahead of Ottawa. So, right. Uh, shots 11 9 Detroit in the first, 19 8 Florida in the second, 8 7 Detroit in the third, and then in the overtime, Florida gets the only shot because that's the one that wins. 36 to 27 are the final shots in favor of Florida. Power plays 0 for 2 for Detroit, 1 for 4 for Florida. Three stars Wenberg, Drieger, and Grice. Uh, hits 32 to 32 to 21 for Florida. Block shots 15 to 9 for Florida. So Florida was ahead on every part of this score sheet. Uh, Grice, 33 saves on 36 shots. Excellent night for him. And Drieger, 25 saves on 27 shots. Great night for him. So the fact that both goalies are in the three stars makes total sense. And Wenberg is the guy who gets the, the game winning goal. It makes sense. Although, I again, I thought Verhage was very prominent throughout this game. All right, next up. Montreal, uh, this was this was a game that, you know, it's funny. Uh, there were two games tonight that I was never really in doubt about. The, the Islanders over Washington and Montreal over Ottawa. They're the two that I've never really had any feeling like they were going to blow it. Um, so reverse retro for the Sens. They're the only ones who wore reverse retros tonight. They, do, they seem to be kind of petering out, don't they? Like we're not seeing them nearly as much. Um, shots are four to two for the Senators at five minutes. Uh, Allen playing really solid. Stutzla had a good start too. Uh, shots were even at the halfway mark of that first period, 7-7. And then Montreal just turns it on. Dano scores from Gallagher and Tatar at 10-48. The Habs pressed with seven minutes left. And then in the last minute, the Sens get a power play. Uh, so we go to the second period. There was a shorthanded chance with that power play that ended this first period for Evans. And then Byron would score from Evans on the shorthanded marker at 48 seconds. And Really, at that point, it's 2 nothing. The shots were 9-3 to three for the Habs halfway through that second period. Uh, they get a power play. Uh, Suzuki had a breakaway. He was robbed by Gustafsson. Uh, he can't buy one right now. Uh, another Habs power play followed that. Their power play was unsuccessful tonight. So we go to the third. Uh, Allen Allen saved a shot from Batherson that was one of those shots that I don't think Batherson takes that shot a month ago. You know, when he was on that really hot streak. But yeah, Ottawa's fighting it right now. Perry would score from Evans and Mete at 443. The Habs are in complete control. The break, I think, really helped Montreal. Um, so if a week off helps them, then two weeks off for Vancouver is going to be awesome. Can't wait till they win out. It's not going to happen. Um, so yeah, Gallagher scores from Dano and Tatar at 10.04. Uh, the Habs get a power play. Unsuccessful. Then the Sens get a power play. It is successful. Uh, Brown ruins the shutout from Norris and Riley at 18-13, and that's really all it does. Uh, Montreal wins this one 4-1. They go to 16-8-9. Uh, the Senators drop to 12-21-4, so they have almost an ident identical record to Detroit, just they have one less overtime point than Detroit does. Uh, shots, 14-11 Montreal in the first, 14-6 Montreal in the second, 10-6 Montreal in the third. Final shots, 38-23 for Montreal. Power plays, 0-3 for, for Montreal. One for two for Ottawa. Um, if I've said Detroit, I apologize. It's Montreal and Ottawa. I had Leafs over here, and I'm pretty sure I called them Detroit. Uh, three stars, Dano, Gallagher, and Tatar. Hits, 35-30 to 30 for Ottawa. Block shots, 8-6 to six for Montreal. So only 14 block shots. It's late, I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> the Thursdays are always brutal. There's so many games on at the same time. Uh, Allen, 22 saves on 23 shots. Gustafson, 34 saves on 38 shots. It's not on Gustafson. This was just Montreal wanted it. This this is the way Montreal should have been playing Ottawa all year. And yeah, this is this is why, you know, when there was that controversial result back then, I said, hey, that you know, this this is what I meant when I said Montreal shouldn't be relying on, you know, a call late in the game. Montreal's a better team. So all right. And Montreal solidifying their spot as the fourth place team in the north which takes some pressure off of Calgary and Vancouver when you think about it, I, I guess. Because then you can just sell and for the players, just, you know, it's next year. All right, next up, Carolina. Uh, I thought Chicago had a real chance in this one, and then they pulled the rug out from under themselves, kind of out of nowhere, which is okay, because a couple of goals in this game were kind of out of nowhere. So, uh... 
yeah, the Canes get the first chance. In fact, five minutes into this, the shots were 2-0 in favor of Carolina. Trocek would score from Hamilton and fast at 9.48. That assist by Hamilton means he's up to a 15-game point streak. The streak continues, the one that people aren't really talking about because it's in Carolina. So, it was Carolina. It was Carolina. Um, the Hawks were not getting chances or shots at all. Like, this wasn't a case of, well, they're getting chances, but they're being blocked. No, they weren't even getting chances. Uh, the Canes pressed with four minutes left. The Hawks were hemmed in. They were really, they were overrun by the Canes. Uh, with 1-11 left, the, the, the power play starts for Carolina. There was a shorthanded chance for the Hawks, which misfired. And the first period comes to an end with a 1-0 Carolina. And then early in the second, Fogel gets a goal from Stahl and Niederreiter at 2:22, which which was originally given to Niederreiter. But if you looked at it on the replay, it, it didn't touch him. Uh, the shots were 4-2 to two for the Canes at three and a half minutes, and I thought, this could get ugly. Like, it's 2 nothing. The Canes are in complete control. Chicago's retreating. The Hawks then get a power play. They would get another after that. Uh, both were unsuccessful, but then Kubalik. Uh, he gets a goal from Kalanick and DeHaan at 15-21. I believe that's Kalanick's first NHL point, uh, and he played well tonight, too. Uh, the Hawks were definitely better in the second half of that period, and they had some chances in the last minute. So they're down 2-1 to one entering the third, and they've got a chance. They do. So third period, early Hawks press, but still, shots were the problem here. Uh, they only had 14 shots after two periods, and they really weren't getting opportunities so much in that third early on. A uh, physical game, a uh, very physical game on, on both sides, but not a lot of, of chances. Uh, and then Hagel scored from Doc at 546. So that's Doc's second assist since returning from injury. And it was a goal that kind of came out of nowhere. It was kind of one of those garbage goals in front of the net. You can call it a dirty goal if you want. Just one of those ones that just kind of bounces into the net. Um, and, and it's a new game. Not for long. Uh, Fogel scores the second of the game from Niederreiter and Stahl at 654. It was Fogel's 25th birthday today. I wish him a happy birthday, but by now where he is, even if he did watch this and he doesn't, uh, his birthday's over. So no, not much point in wishing him a happy birthday. Uh, yeah, so Fogel on his 25th birthday gets a second goal. That put them in the lead, but that doesn't last either. Chicago did fight their way back into this. Uh, Strom scores uh, to tie it up from Murphy and Yanmark at 10-24. And it was a nice tip shot in front by Strom. Not much chance for Reimer on it. And it was the second shot of the third, and it was also the second goal for Chicago. So when they get shots, they go in. Two shots, two goals for Chicago. Uh, oddly enough, they would get a lot of chances after that, and then none of them went in. Uh, they got a power play. Uh, Kurashev misses misses one in close. Uh, Fogel was going for the hat trick at the other end of the ice. Uh, and in the last minute, Kubalik's absolutely denied. And then, again, these kind of out-of-nowhere goals. So sort of like the... The one from Hagel where I went, what? That that went in? I had the same reaction to, to, to the goal by Fast from Trocek and Pesci at 1931. And uh, yeah, that was a kind of out of nowhere goal that just took the legs out from underneath the Chicago Blackhawks. And Carolina wins this one 4-3 to three to go to 24-8-3. Uh, for Chicago, they're 17-16-5. And, five. and uh, they have to be happy with some of the other results that happened tonight. They have to be happy that Columbus lost. And then this game over here that we're about to get to, they have to be happy with how that turned out. Or they have to look at this and say, gee, you know, if we got a point or two tonight, we could have really helped ourselves out even more. Uh, so the shots in this one were 13-3, to Carolina in the first, 11-8, to Chicago in the second, 11-10, to Chicago in the third. Final shots, 31-25 to for Carolina. Carolina was 0-1 for 1 in the power play. Chicago was 0-3. Um, three stars, Fast, Fogel, and Kubalik. Hits, 33-17 to 17 for Carolina. So they were very physical tonight. Uh, block shots, 14-13 to 13 Carolina. So Carolina outshot them and outhit them. That's not all that common. Uh, Reimer, 20 saves on 23 shots at one end. Lankin and 27 saves on 31 shots at the other. And, uh, yeah, entertaining game. Uh, it, did, it did feel sort of like playoff hockey, especially late there. All right, moving on. Dallas. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, Dallas, I'm kind of torn on this because they are still alive, right? It's not like they're completely out of this. They do need to win a few games in a row. A result like this is encouraging. But it's trying to put games in, together where they have three or four good games in a row. 
Uh, and when this season's done, because it's only a 56 game season at most, right? We may have some shortened seasons beyond that too, depending on what happens between now and the middle of May. But um, I, I can definitely take a look at game by game with some of these teams because it's it's fascinating to see how some teams are good at going on runs and some not so much. And I think the back-to-backs against the same teams have a lot to do with that. So Lindell scores early in this one from Como at 2.39. And Essa Lindell might have had his best game of the year tonight. Uh, no shots for the Predators at six minutes. The Predators get a power play. That's killed off. And their play started improving after that, much like in the Boston game, after they get a power play, they're like, oh, we're supposed to shoot at that net. Um, Hudobin was playing well until Sissons, well, even after Sissons scores, from Trenton at 1621. That made it a 1 1 game. So after the first period, one where Dallas played well, it's a tie game, because that's how that works. Second period, um, Stars push it around five minutes. Gardner ends up hitting a post. Uh, Predators get a power play. They don't score on that. And then Dallas scores to take the lead. Robertson. Three-game goal streak now for Robertson uh, from Hintz and Pavelski at 849. And I want to call the robinson hints pavelski line the new kid line. Because um, I think all three of those kids are going to be a big part of Dallas' future. Yep. I, I know how old Pavelski is. I'm just I'm just saying that should be the new. Right, fine. All right. It's it's April 1st. You can... No? All right. Okay. All right. All right fine. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll move on. Stars then get a power play. During that power play, there was a shorthanded chance for Howla, which wouldn't go. Uh, last minute, the Stars get a power play, so we go into the third with them still on the power play. And with only six seconds left in it, Ben gets a goal, which may not be the prettiest he's had. I think we didn't off his skate. But it counts. Gurianov and Klingberg with the assists at 141. That made it 3-1. to And Dallas is pretty good with a 2-1, two-goal lead in the third period. At least they, they should be, right? Um, not much room for the Predators in that third period. Dallas did a very good job of clogging up the, the middle of the ice and, and basically trying to trap this out. Uh, Stars control, but the Predators end up getting a power play, and I'm pretty sure that was a penalty by the Stars in the Predators' end. Those ones usually are, are painful because it's like, don't take a penalty at their end of the ice. If you have to take one at your own end, fine, but don't take a penalty at the other end. Uh, Gurianov missed a prime chance. The shots were 6-4 to four in favor of Dallas with five minutes left, showing... They were doing a very good job of keeping Nashville away from their net. And then an empty net goal. It's Haskinen from Pavelski at 17-51. And Dallas wins this one 4-1. They go to 12-12-10. and 10. So yeah, all they need is two, two overtime loss points. And they go to 12-12-12. and 12. So the dream still stays alive. Uh, Nashville drops to 19-18-1. And, and that hurts because, again, Chicago lost tonight. And the, the top three teams in the division all won. Columbus lost as well. So... Everything kind of stays the same with the bottom three and and the top three, um, you know, maintain uh, their status as the best three in the division without any argument. I don't think anybody's going to argue that. It'd be very interesting to see who gets that fourth spot in that division. Um, so uh, the shots in this one, Nashville outshoots Dallas 11 to 10 in the first. Dallas outshoots them 13 to 4 in the second period. And then in the third, they outshoot Nashville 8 to 7. Final shots 31 to 22 for Dallas. Power plays Dallas goes one for two. Nashville goes 0 for three. Your three stars, Hudobin, Hints, and Lindell. Block shots were 11 to 10 Nashville. Hits 26 to 21 for Dallas. So Dallas outshoots and out hits the Nashville Predators. That's that's a little different. Um, I think if this game was a couple years ago, it would have been the other way around. Nashville would have outshot them and out hit them. Um, Hudobin saves 21 out of 22. Soros saved 27 out of 30. And the mystique of Soros with the Stars, maybe that's finally a thing of the past. I say that now, and then the next game will probably shut him out. But hey, let's go ahead and change boards. So this game, as it was starting, the last game was ending. So I thought, all right, well, since since the uh, Chicago-Carolina game's over, I can... Uh, Go ahead and give this game just a full-on board like I would normally give a game on the weekend that was a matinee game. I can do that. And so there you go, Minnesota and Vegas. And I used the wordmark logos for both because why not? I don't use this Vegas one very often, so sure. I've had that magnet for quite a while. I've had that magnet for quite a while. So, yeah. Um, this was kind of a fun game, and it went to a shootout because it was the last game of the night, and that's what happens. Uh, the West Coast game that starts at 7.30 will go to a shootout. Uh, early chance for the Wild. Uh, Wah tried to end a 21-game drought. Uh, spoiler alert, he would not get a goal tonight. 
Uh, and I feel bad because Nick Roy had one a couple games ago and it was taken back on an offside. So that drought is still technically there, but he does have a goal that just didn't count. And that has to be more frustrating than anything. You'd, you'd feel better, you would think, if you just didn't have anything than have to say, well, I had a goal, but they took it away. So Carlson scores from Theodore and Martinez at 329. And it's a Vegas game, so I'm kind of thinking, you know, this could get out of control because Vegas won the first two games in this set against Minnesota. Minnesota won the second two, and of course, the ones that Minnesota won were in Minnesota, and Vegas won theirs at home. So no road team had won before tonight. But Kaprizov scores from Greenway and Eric Sinek at 757, which followed a wild power play that had two shots, some good puck movement. But it's a wild power play, so it's not going to work. Um, and yet tonight, that's part of the story. So it was 1-1. Uh, McNabb then hit a post as Vegas pushed. Talbot denied Stone after that. So uh, Cam Talbot was a huge story tonight. More pressure after that by Vegas and more saves by Talbot. Uh, Vegas gets a power play. There were no shots on that. Solid penalty kill. And then Victor Rask hit a crossbar with a minute and 10 seconds left. Interestingly enough, Minnesota did outshoot Vegas in the first period. I thought Vegas was the better team in the first period. Uh, second period, and in scoring chances, Vegas had more than Minnesota. So eyes weren't deceiving. Second period, the Wild uh, get early zone time, but Vegas cleared it out before any damage is done. Both teams had negative goal differentials in the second period, and neither of them did anything to help or hurt themselves tonight in the second period. It's bizarre how some teams are really good in one period and not so good in another. And there we are again. Um, both teams... Uh, had their opportunities, just nobody ends up getting goals. Uh, first five minutes was short on good chances. Vegas misfired on a two-on-one when Smith wasn't able to handle it. The Wild get a power play, which led to a shorthanded two-on-one for Vegas. And I put right there, Wild power play sucks. Because remember, coming into today, it's at 9.5%, which is still better than the 7.5 it was at not too long ago. Man, just brutal. Uh, Kolasar was then robbed after the power play ends. We had a whistle and a face-off, and then he robbed him again. Kolasar absolutely might be save of the year by Talbot there. That stick save was absolutely just bonkers. Um, the Wild tried to answer. Leonard made some saves as well. Leonard's not the three stars, but he should be. Uh, Robin Leonard had a really good game. Um, it was a press by Vegas, which drew a power play. That was killed off. The Wild had a two-on-one that was defended well by Theodore. Uh, there was a break then for Tuck. Remember, Tuck's due. But Talbot said, no, you're not, and he stopped it. So Tuck's due for a goal, but it didn't happen. Um, Last-minute chances for the Wild, and it, with 6.3 seconds left, things get kind of scrummy, and the DJ being right on right on cue played physical by Olivia Newton-John, gave me a good chuckle, and it went on the board. Because, um, yeah, when you see guys are just all angry and you hear them, let's get physical in the background is Olivia Newton-John, that's, that's some fantastic DJing. So third period early in the third period as well. Uh, McNabb scores from Carrier at 139. And Vegas, coming into tonight's action, carrying a goal differential of plus 21 in the third period. I know people think that I uh, exaggerate just how good Vegas is in the third period. But that plus 21 is the best in the league in the third period. They're they're very good at comebacks. And when I saw that, I thought, okay, so that's that's it. So keep in mind this is, you know, Minnesota's a team that that's one of my wife's favorite teams so I, I like to go back and forth with her especially when it's the only game on and after McNabb scored I was like I don't, I don't think they're gonna win tonight she's like mm, yeah, probably not because that was McNabb's first goal in 67 games and I felt like the wild had to answer quickly and I put that on the board uh Johnson shot high on a wild three on two things get kind of scrummy that leads to a four on four uh Leonard denied Rask during a bad line change for Vegas uh, and it ends up being a penalty for Vegas, which means it's four on three. And then the Wild did something ridiculous. Insane, even. They scored on the power play. It's Spurgeon from Fiala and Kaprizov at 531. It was a four on three goal, so maybe they confused themselves and didn't realize they weren't supposed to score. Um, and I, I say that because it's just been, it's been such a nightmare, that power play this year. I'm just kidding around. That kind of thing, right? All right. We're good? We're good. Uh, Carrier was then denied on a fast break right after uh, Hartman was stopped at the other end. So there were some really good chances, and both goaltenders were standing tall in that period, even though they both allowed a goal at this point. I think they understood the next goal won. With 10.26 left, Vegas gets their third power play. That was killed off. Minnesota's penalty kill was very good tonight. 
Uh, Vegas gets a three on one. Talbot with some amazing saves. Uh, he saved the next one right after that. And yeah, without Talbot, this game's probably like five to two for, for Vegas. Um, Wild generally defending well. Uh, with 58.2 seconds left, Vegas takes a timeout. Uh, Benino had a near miss with 15 seconds left. Almost ended it in regulation. Um, and then we go to overtime. Vegas, the only team without an overtime loss. Um, their only extra point loss is is a shootout loss. So for Minnesota, they're looking up at Vegas. For Vegas, with that one point, they put themselves a point clear of Colorado. This is the game in hand they had on Colorado, so they're a point clear right now. Uh, at 33 seconds, Erickson Eck ran into Leonard, and there's a power play for goalie interference. And yeah, that was that was a legit penalty. Um, and and Erickson Eck, all he had to try to do there to avoid the penalty was just take a different, just try to avoid hitting the goaltender. You're you're making it way too easy for the referee to make that call. So during that power play, just the saves from from Talbot were ridiculous, which killed it off. With a minute and 24 seconds left, uh, Martinez and Erickson Eck said hi to each other. Um, by which I mean that like. Martinez just wanted to tool Erickson Eck. So Erickson Eck, remember, had just run the goalie. He had just come out of the penalty box. And then Leonard makes a glove save. He puts his, puts the glove on the puck. And there's Erickson Eck poking at it and poking at him. All right. Well played. And and didn't didn't make Vegas happy. So we go to a shootout. Both teams 0-1 in shootouts. What's going to happen? Uh, Fiala ends up scoring the winner. And it was, it was a fluky winner. It bounced off the post. It hit Leonard on the back of the foot. Or back of the skate, and it went into the net. So, if Leonard moved a bit to the left, it wouldn't have gone in, and that shootout would probably still be going on right now. It'd be in like round 65, and uh, I'd still be waiting to start this video. So, Minnesota wins three to two in the shootout. I don't have the team records up there because I was anxious to get things going. But yeah, Vegas is one point clear in first place. For Minnesota, they get two points. That brings them further clear. I think they're now eight points ahead of St. Louis. So things are good for Minnesota right now. Uh, they don't look like they're a team that has any concern at all about missing the playoffs. And if they get more results like this, yeah, they won't have any worries. Um, Minnesota outshot Vegas in the first 10 to 9. Like I said, Vegas kind of played them that period. But then in the second, they outshoot them 16 to 15. It's a great game. Uh, and then in, in the third, eight shots apiece. And then in overtime, the shots were 5 to 3 in favor of Vegas. Final shots, both teams had 37 shots. Uh, Minnesota won for 3 on the power play. Yeah, it works at the end. And Vegas scores uh, nothing on their four power plays. Hits, 21-13 for Vegas. Block shots, 19-17 for Minnesota. Talbot saves 35 out of 37. Leonard saves 35 out of 37. Uh, three stars, Talbot, Fiala, and McNabb with his first goal in about 10 years. At least it feels that way for McNabb, I'm sure. And now he's got that monkey off his back. So we'll see what he does from here. He now has a goal to go with his assist this year. Let me know your thoughts regarding any of these nine games in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys again soon.